Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and in today's episode about vintage display technology I'll present to you my home built, well from a kit, home built oscilloscope clock. Now you might uh, say, well oscilloscopes were of course or are vintage technology but an oscilloscope clock um, would have never been possible in the heyday of uh, oscilloscope tubes. Well, certainly true, but I will give you uh, down in the description some links about uh, what uh, can be done with an oscilloscope tube to display uh, characters or symbols uh, or even text without a microcontroller. This oscilloscope clock of course is uh, controlled by a microcontroller. We will take a closer look at the innards of inside the acrylic case here, uh, which was uh, custom built for this clock. Um, and you might notice uh, two things. Uh, first of all, um, the uh, display is not 100% uh, vertical, uh, so I would have to adjust the trace rotation, just as in your uh, analog um, oscilloscope. Uh, that's due to the fact that each time I move the clock, the earth magnetic field has a slightly different orientation or any metals here lying around and that uh, gives a slightly different amount uh, of the necessary trace rotation. Uh, so that's not a fault of the of the clock or of the kit of the electronics. It's just because I was too lazy to adjust it now because in 10 minutes when I move it back um, here from the bench um, I would have to readjust the trace rotation. Second is if you watch closely um, you see some amount of afterglow. Uh, I've turned the, um, the brightness of the display just as low so that you can barely see it. But if you uh, watch closely, you will notice it. That's because uh, this um, beautiful um, oscilloscope tube is probably was used in radar displays where an afterglow is quite uh, useful. I could try to crank up the brightness a little bit for one. Perhaps now you can see it a little bit uh, better if you follow the second arm here that you see a little bit of afterglow. But now this looks not so beautiful now, so I will turn back the brightness to a more appropriate level. And um, not only is the time displayed with uh, artificial uh, seconds, minutes and an hour arm, but also the date. And you see this little symbol here. That's uh, because um, the clock is coupled to the uh, local German or European uh, time signal. Uh, which is uh, transmitted over a long wave. Uh, and this symbol uh, just displays that it has locked onto the official time here in Germany. So um, that was it for a first glance. And now let's take a closer look at how it looks inside. So I'm sorry that it will not be very interesting uh, to do a uh, horizontal manual scan here because the uh, tube nearly covers all of the interesting details in the PCB but I'll do my best uh, to uh, show you at least a little bit. Um, he here you can see on the top side of the, of the oscilloscope tube there is a high voltage uh, cable going off that's due to a, uh, an extra acceleration uh, voltage. I don't know the exact uh, English uh, word for that. In German it's called the after acceleration. And if we move the clock manually and cautiously a little bit forward, 
Here below comes the uh, PCB with the, all the control circuit. I'll try to refocus onto the PCB. There are a lot of uh, 10 turn pots, all in all four 10 turn pots for all the adjustments and three additional trimmers. Um, if you want to know what kind of oscilloscope tube I've used here, it's, um, it must be from the 1970s. It's from uh, the German company AEG, uh, which is nothing else but the German division of General Electric. Uh, not existing anymore because they ran out of business some decades ago. Um, the type is a, the DP10-14 um, S2 and the S2 probably relates to the special blue phosphor used um, with the uh, afterglow. And uh, you can see part of the high voltage generation. Of course, I will give you the link to the uh, kit maker and where I got all the parts from, uh, the tube itself, the oscilloscope tube itself, the kit. And here you can see some little extra, um, extra circuit, circuitry on, on perf board for this extra acceleration uh, high voltage. And finally at the back, the um, special purpose may or custom made um, toroidal transformer, which supplies all the necessary uh, voltages for the heater element inside the oscilloscope tube. Uh, the uh, voltages for the plate voltages for vertical and horizontal deflection and the uh, voltages for the microcontroller. Of course, this is microcontroller controlled because that's the only way you can, uh, you can generate here such a complex uh, display. And uh, on the back, well, not surprisingly, um, we have uh, an on-off switch, uh, some push buttons for manual setting the time and the date, a fuse, uh, the connection to the timecode receiver, and that was it. Uh, and I think it's really the best to display such a clock either in an acrylic case or even uh, free standing, uh, so that you can see all, especially because it's transparent here, where all the magic happens, or part of the magic happens inside the um, tube. It's really fascinating. And so that was it for today, for a uh, kind of special edition about the vintage display technology. Not 100% vintage because of surely the microcontroller board it has nothing to do with vintage. Uh, but the display itself is vintage, must be from the 1960s or 1970s. And so, thanks for watching. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. Until next time, bye from Roger, bye from Kanka Labs.